begin to uh, mm, to study deeply peptides very recently. Though I am professor of the department of bioorganic chemistry, and this bioorganic chemistry it is about proteins, it is about peptides, about nucleic acids, and other organic molecules, and so on. But uh, I am a biophysicist by in my education, a biophysicist from faculty of biology. And that is interesting. There are two kinds of biophysicists. One from uh, physicists, uh, their major, and the other are biologists major. And they have, uh, according to my experience, they have a different world view. My world view is vital, vital, vitalism. You see, if you are a biologist, you believe that there exists life. If you are a physicist, you think how to construct life. But life constructs itself. <laughs> you see? Okay, uh, but I went a little uh, into um, <laughs> aside. Uh, in fact, uh, it happened that uh, some time ago, about a year ago, uh, uh, in my uh, group, which I, uh, I chief, we decided to study the effect of peptides. I'll in few, uh, a little later I'll explain what is this. Uh, study effect of peptides which uh, we uh, mm, took from plants uh, upon the plant uh, development, uh, development of plant. Uh, but uh, before this, and my major interest is uh, major interest is bioenergetics based on the processes of oxidation of respiration, which take place, of course, in aqua systems. Because, as a matter of fact, we uh, know, but we do not uh, realize very deeply that we are essentially waterly systems that we, from the point of view of chemistry, and I am bioorganic chemist, we are a little dirty water. Why a little dirty water? You see, chemists, they uh, measure, they, they uh, measure uh, the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, make their measurements, not in grams, kilograms, and so on. They make their measurements in so-called moles, mole, one mole. What is one mole of something? It is a quantity of molecules in one kilogram or one liter. Quantity of molecules. So, uh, the, if we calculate how many different molecules are in our body and uh, compare the quantity of different molecules in our body, then we'll see that uh, we have very, very few DNA molecules. Because one cell in, in principle, it has only, well, not, but I simplify. We see one, d one cell, no, not in now, in bacteria, only one DNA molecular. Yeah? Now, there are many protein molecules. There are more uh, molecules of uh, low molecular weight substances like sugars and so on. But what is the most stuff in any living thing? Water molecules, they are very small. And so if we calculate how many water molecules are in our body in comparison to protein molecules, to lipid molecules, to sugar, to DNA, and so on, it will turn out that we are 99 plus percent of water from point of view of molecules. And as a matter of fact, there are even such in living organisms like, uh, say, uh, hydroids, like jellyfish. Yeah, everybody knows. It is 99, some of them 99.9% by weight water. And all the rest, which is the major interest of all the biochemists and bioorganic chemists and so on, all these organic molecules are 0.1%. So from this point of view, this jellyfish is water which is much more pure than water in which it's, it swims. But we don't uh, see, uh, sometimes we don't realize that this very pure water is alive. While water in which jellyfish swims, which is less, contains less water, it is not so much alive, at least, if it is not dead. I mean, sea water or just river water and so on. So it means that water is a living uh, thing. From the point of view of jellyfish, you see, jellyfish, of course you can kill it. You can dry it 
and then you don't have living jellyfish and you'll have all these organic molecules but no water no life so from this example you see that water is in fact life now what is life life is a process it is not a thing that is you see you of course you can put jellyfish in your pocket <laughs> see? But, so in, in this sense it, it, it is a thing but it, it is uh, 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 unless it, it, it is dead it is continuously changing it is a continuous process and process needs energy for process to flow for process to and this process which, which is continuously changing also each next second it is a different thing it is a different uh, uh, stuff so it is also changing and the question is where from this energy comes which fuels this machine this is bi biological energy and as soon as jellyfish is 99.9% .9 water this energy should somehow be taken from water peptides are very small molecules which are very specifically hydrated mm -hmm. not small they they are they intermediate between proteins intermediate between proteins and amino acids from the, which they are built but they may be very specifically hydrated and being small they are very flexible so being flexible and uh, be, being hydrated with this easy water which as we told you already kind of resonates so peptides give signals for what and it beca becomes more and more clear now for uh, development for growth for cell division for proliferation for differentiation for development and for regeneration that is most interesting what is most interesting for me peptides give being hydrated very specifically and being very flexible they give signals for regeneration and what is regeneration we were just talking about the sclerosis sclerosis is when tissue and organ become less and uh, and less uh, operative how to cure how to, to 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 improve situation you need to uh, to recover you need to uh, uh, to to, uh, uh, to somehow dismantle this organ and give signals for uh, building up a, a new stuff when you dismantle this organ this is called apoptosis self uh, killing of cells and uh, breaking down proteins when you break down proteins proteins are broke down into peptides small fragments and these peptides are not just a uh, uh, waste uh, you see it's it they have all biological activity and their biological activity is signals for rejuvenation so I studying these peptides from point of view of not organic bioorganic chemist but taking into consideration the role of water here I came to a probably philosophical I would say well, dream <laughs> not, not even hypothesis uh, hypothesis uh, it can be checked that when protein dies it uh, it produces fragments which are called peptides and these fragments are signals for building of the new structures of, of, of uh, the structures which were impaired which were not able to perform their function uh, and so on and now they so dying is the stimulus for new life and peptides are probably the major function of peptides fragments of proteins is just uh, to to be the uh, condition 
Of course, there should be many other different conditions, but this is one of the most important. These are signals how to build up a new protein, how to build up a new, no, not just new, pure, new protein, but how to organize all these proteins into new structure, in, into a new organ, into a new kidney, into a new lung, into a new uh, uh, heart, and so on. And there, as a matter of fact, there are more and more now uh, evidence that uh, these peptides really play the role of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, development and re rejuvenation and appearance. Like, as a matter of fact, we know, uh, well, young people at least, I am not the, the fan of this, but those people who are use the peptides for anabolism, they built up their muscles. What, what is this? They are, they are building new form. Of course, they, they uh, over um, use it. Uh, I would say it's well, one can like or not. But from the point of view of biology, they use peptides in order to build up their organism. Peptides are used uh, for to uh, re reconstruct brain. There are neuron uh, neuron uh, proliferation peptides uh, which stimulate proliferation of neurons. Uh, very recently. Uh, there was uh, just a belief that neurons uh, simply uh, can only die. They cannot uh, divide, they cannot uh, give up. No, it turns, turns out, no, there are peptides which uh, stimulate the uh, compensation of uh, neurons which were uh, lost and so on. Again, peptides.